Hey guys, this is Trent. I am here to videotape for the first time an unboxing with my Canon HF100 HD camcorder. The device that I'm going to unbox for you guys today is the Nokia N97. Now, I had a friend of mine who first purchased this device through a pre-order on NokiaUSA.com. And when he got it, he found out that it really wasn't the right kind of device for him. So initially I came across an opportunity where I was able to purchase it from him for a very good price, and I'm glad that I did. Okay, we appear to have the Nokia N97 box right here. Amazing, amazing. Look at that. A simple black box, not flashy in any way, shape, or form. You got silver printing on the exterior of the box, Nokia N series, the Nokia N97 on the, on the side, as well as an embossed version of the N97 itself on the lid. All right, we appear to have some sort of Nokia exchange return paperwork. I guess that was when my friend was going to return it back. And here we go. Look at that. The Nokia N97 in the flesh for the first time. Amazing. Now what I'm going to do now is try out the slider. Whoa! The sliding mechanism feels very solid. Extremely solid. Very impressive. Has a short click and the screen does not appear to tilt at all. It just stays in one fixed position here. And when it slides back down into closed mode, it appears to do so quite softly and it doesn't slam against the bottom portion of the phone. When this device is closed, there's not really any way to tell that there is a sliding QWERTY keypad because it is very solid in its construction. The one thing that's boggling my mind right now is that as I'm holding it in one piece, there is no wobbling coming from the slider. If you didn't know any better, you'd think that this did not have any kind of sliding QWERTY keypad on it at all. The keys on the QWERTY keyboard don't appear to have much feedback at all. So hopefully I will be able to get used to this kind of feedback when I'm typing on a regular basis. You have an included D-pad, which also suffers from the same kind of light tactile feedback that the rest of the buttons are suffering from as well. The entire backing of the phone so far appears to have the same soft plastic feel that is on my Trio 750. You've got your 5 megapixel camera lens that is made with Carl Zeiss optics with a mechanical slider and it also comes with a dual LED flash. At the top of the device you've got your power key as well as a 3.5 millimeter headset jack for regular headphones. This 3.5 millimeter jack also allows for TV out to be implemented on this device. You also appear to have stereo speakers, a channel on this side and a channel on the opposite side. You have your rocker keys for your volume as well as a dedicated camera key, USB port for charging. And next to this USB port, you also have an indicator light that I assume tells you the status of the charging of the phone. This here happens to be the proximity sensor. This basically lets the phone know when it's close to your face so that it can deactivate the touch screen. You have the earpiece. You appear to have touch sensitive call and end keys here toward the bottom, along with a menu key that is an actual button with tactile feedback. Then you have your whole touch screen right here. You've got your front-facing camera for video calling, as well as an ambient light sensor. From the box, we also have a stylus that's included that is to be used for the touchscreen navigation, since this device is a resistive touchscreen phone. The BP4L battery, the same battery that is used in the E71, as well as the famous E90 communicator. An adapter optimized for the North America. We also have a remote that's included that has a port 
for your included headset, along with a clip, volume rocker keys on the side, a call button, and controls for playing back media content. The included earbuds, which aren't my favorite, I prefer the in-ear variation. Then you've got the foam covers for the earbuds, some sort of cleaning cloth. I assume it's for the touch screen. Very soft material. The USB cable, regular USB on one end, and a micro USB on the other. Manual that comes with every Nokia device. The software for the Nokia Ovi Suite, as well as warranty information and some more marketing stuff, as usual. So if I'm very excited to finally get my hands on this device. Now, my initial impressions just from holding the device is that it's a pretty good size. It feels about the same as the iPhone or the iPod Touch and even the E71. The E71 and the N97 almost appear to be the same height. Very nice. And then you can also see that the N97 is much thicker in order to account for the sliding QWERTY keypad. There are some features built into this device that make it worthwhile for me to possibly move from my E71. The fact that it's got 32 gigabytes of storage inside, that's 32 gigabytes, it equals the same amount of storage on my iPod Touch. That's 32 gigabytes in a smartphone is not really your normal amount of storage. I believe off the top of my head that the Nokia N97 as well as the Apple iPhone 3GS are the only two devices that happen to have that amount of storage built into it. The only thing that really does concern me for right now is that the tactile feedback on the QWERTY keypad as well as the D-pad is not really impressive at all. There is not a reassuring click that comes when I press on these buttons. Now other than the QWERTY keypad giving me a concern, I am very confident that this can be a formidable device in comparison to the iPhone and to other Nokia devices that I've had in the past. I am going to be using the N97 as my main device so that I will be able to come back to you guys with an impression of what I feel this device has in regards to its potential. So with that, you guys take care and stay safe.